Hello, hello, hello. In this video, we're going to be looking at another one of the inimitable Chris Layton's grooves. This time it'll be Tightrope by Stevie Ray Vaughan, of course. And uh, we're looking at a really nice chattery snare drum part, which gives us an opportunity to explore some ghost note action. So it's a really cool one to learn. And uh, if you keep watching this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to do some exercises to really develop that side of your playing. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to try and throw this one in at the beginning today. If you like this video, make sure you like uh, by clicking the thumbs up thingy bob and subscribe to my channel as well if you want to be informed of future videos. And please be aware that I offer one on one drum lessons online. So anywhere you are in the world, if you find me at all helpful and would like me to help you directly, please get in touch. The details are in the description. Here's a demonstration of the groove for you. So let's take a look at the ingredients for this groove. The first thing is it's based around a very basic rock beat with the bass on one, one and and three, snare on two and four, like this. Then the ghost notes, which is the fun part, fill from the two all the way to the end of three and then the four E ander. So the pattern would be like this. It goes one and two E and a three and four E and a one and two E and a three E and four E and a. This can be a little bit challenging to start with. Uh, let's listen to just the snare part on its own, right? We're gonna go one and In the very first few bars in the intro, there's a bit more chatter going on, but it's enough to worry about the verse for now, I think. So what do we do with this? We need to be able to control, first of all, the relationship between the accents and the softer notes, the ghost notes. And uh, let's have a look at an exercise that will help us do that. Also, I find it um, quite useful to play the softer notes off the center of the drum. So I'm going to play the accents always bang in the middle of the drum as much as I can. Uh, that gives you the kind of driest sound of the drum. I mean, this is an unmuffled snare and it's all ringy, but it'll give you the least ringy sound if you hit it right in the middle. It gives you a good meaty sound if I hit it off centre. I get a little bit more ring, but I also get more bounce. And if I want to keep myself really relaxed when I'm playing this, I want to take advantage of that a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the snare in the middle on the two and four, and all the ghost notes I'm going to move slightly off centre like this. Okay. And you might not want to think about that at first if you haven't played something like this before, but as you get better at it, it might be something you want to add in. Or you, you might think the sound isn't good or you might not like the way that feels, so, so don't listen to me. What we're going to do is we're going to do an exercise where we're going to play the accented snare on the two and four. We're going to play the bass drum as it happens in the groove. And then we're going to add one ghost note at a time until we get fairly comfortable with developing the relationship between the accented note and the ghost note that's coming immediately after the snare drum accent and uh, the ghost notes that follow. I'm trying to just get a nice smooth balance of those things. Uh, so I'll show you, well, I'll show you how, how this works. So we're going to start off with just one ghost note and then we're going to add uh, as we go. So we go like this. Now, that first one I think is the most tricky part because you've got that loud snare and then the softer ghost note immediately after. And if you haven't worked on this before, you may find that you tend to get quite a loud ghost note. It's not really a ghost, it's like half dead. So let's 
put the next ghost note in the two E and or the four E and like this. Okay, now we're going to put the R in as well. Even I'm, I'm doing this now, I feel I, I really need to focus on the clean execution of all those notes. I need to keep myself as relaxed as I can be. And, and while I'm doing stuff like that, especially uh, with all these dynamics, I notice little bits of tension coming up in my body in different places. So when I do notice that, I just try and relax and, and let it go. Let's add another ghost note. You can just work on that until you really feel that the balance between the louder and softer notes works nicely for you. Um, you want to listen carefully to your coordination as well. You'll notice that there might be a tendency for you to flam between either the hi-hat and the snare drum strokes or the, the bass drum and the snare drum strokes or maybe there's different places in the groove that different things flam with each other. And again, just by keeping repeating that and relaxing, uh, that will sort of iron itself out. And I strongly recommend that you record yourself and listen back, okay? So once you've worked on that a little bit, you can try and push the tempo when you're really, really relaxed. But let's see how that sounds again at the speed of the song. Two, three, four. Okay, it took me a, a moment to get warmed up to that. It's pretty tricky. Once you've got the hang of it on the hi-hat, work it out on the rye too, because you're gonna need that in the guitar solo and the outro for the song, like this. If you feel like you need a bit more challenge, you can play your hi-hat on two and four, or even on all the quarters, on one, two, three, and four, like this. Now, if you're not used to playing just a long string of notes like that at that sort of tempo, you might find it takes a while to get up to the speed of the song. And what you can do in the meantime, let's say you wanna go out and play this with your band in a few weeks, is you can learn how to play it with slightly fewer ghost notes, but just enough to give your hand a bit of a rest. And uh, even once you've got the hang of playing the full groove, you can use this strategy just to give you a little bit of a break while you're playing the song. I find it really useful to be able to, to drop out of things a little bit sometimes if I feel a little bit fatigued. What we're gonna do here is we're going to, for example, and, and again, you can kind of work out for yourself how you wanna do it, but it seems logical to me, for instance, to leave out the um, and of the two ghost note and the three. So we get something like this, one and two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, something like that, right? So let's see how that sounds. That works pretty well. And again, remember, you can drop in and out of that uh, or any other kind of abbreviation of the ghost notes that you want to while still keeping a pretty chattery flavor. I'm sure you agree. It sounds okay. So that wraps it up for Tightrope and another Chris Layton gem. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. And, uh, you know, use that exercise to really focus in on the uh, dynamics and accuracy of your ghost note playing. I'm, I'm sure you'll find it beneficial. Uh, if you did or if you didn't, please leave me a comment in the uh, comments below. And uh, meanwhile, 
like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. And as I said before, if you need uh, some help with your drumming one on one, I'm available online. So check the description or go to joethedrummer.com if you'd like to book a lesson. Now, uh, I think it's time for you to go away and practice.